Hey folks, welcome back to snorkel.tv. Carl Schuf here, and we're going to be talking about using tween max to randomly tween the tint of a movie clip. And here you'll see that uh, on in the browser there's a GTI rolling real smooth across the screen. And every time this animation plays, you'll see that a different colored car appears. Well, I don't have thousands of cars in the library. Uh, we're using literally one little line of code to change the color of that car as it drives by. Um, so if you some more examples here, you can actually see the tween happening, where the car is just sitting there and in front of your face, it's changing to a random color. And I think that animation is one or two seconds long. And you can just sit here all day waiting for the most perfect color to show up. Ah, that's not too shabby. Um, furthermore, here's another sort of simpler example, with a simpler shape, I should say. Um, here we have a little peek into the future where we're going to be talking about random perpetual motion with tween max, where you can just have objects tweening forever and ever to random positions and also random colors. That's why I'm showing you this example, uh, because there's two symbols that are always randomly changing color, and you can get some pretty uh, neat outcomes here. Sometimes I stare blankly at this for hours and just hoping that a beautiful color scheme shows up, like, you know, maybe something like perfect. I click the mouse and it pauses, I release and it starts playing. So fun little stuff that you can do. Again, the amount of code you need to build something like this is so little and I will do a tutorial on how this was made very soon. Now, before we get into how we do this with Tween Max, I just want to give you a little look at how this color change is handled um, historically or purely through ActionScript 3. And let's open up the browser window a little bit. And here is one of my favorite flash sites, karupa.com. The site is absolutely incredible. Probably one of my top, well, it's definitely in my top three sites right now. Um, and it has been for a long time because I could always go here, find tutorials that were written extremely well, concise, good screenshots, code explained. And they give an example of rolling over different boxes to change colors. You know, we're going to do virtually the same thing, but in a quicker method. And I just want to make absolutely clear that any criticism of the code here is not a criticism of this site in any way. The site is awesome, and they're showing you really the way this is done. Um, the whole thing is that Tween Max allows this stuff here to be done behind the scene, so you don't have to rack your head over why does it say my color, color transform, square dot transform, color transform, my color, color, square, transform, color transform, my color. Um, it's absolutely sort of maddening to think in those terms. So again, it ain't Karupa's fault that that's the way things are done in ActionScript 3. Um, we just want to show you, in contrast, how nice it can be with Tween Max. All right, so let's get out of here. And I'm going to go to my Finder and go into the GreenSock AS3 tweening platform folder that we got when we downloaded this stuff. And let's just open up basics.swift. And let's say that we want to change the color of something. Well, we're not going to change X or Y. Let's go to Tint, set my color, make sure we're using Tween Max. Lose a line of code there, thank you. And let's set the color to, who knows what, this cool sky blue color. All right, I like that. Hit Tween, and there you go. That symbol turns to be blue. Well, all I'm going to do is hijack this little line of code here copy that out, go into Flash, here's my starter file, and notice on the stage I have an actions layer, and in layer one we have this thing called GTIMC. And let's just go ahead and uh, double click on this, and you will see in the timeline, why did I close that, that here we have our entire, the interior of the GTI, and it's made up of many, many layers, um, for all the different le levels of detail. We have some shading there, we have a shadow on the bottom which gives us a little bit of depth. Um, we have the lights, blah blah blah, and I can just keep just removing things. Whoa, I don't want to remove that. Um, let's scroll down a little bit to solid fill. Little option click on that layer's visibility and we're left with this solid shape. Okay, This thing here is called Body MC. So, Body MC lives inside of on scene one 
GTIMC. So that's the solid shape that we're going to be changing the color of. So let's go to my actions and you'll see in the actions layer I already have um, my import statements. I'm actually not going to be using any easing here so let's get rid of that and let's just paste in the code that I got from the basics Swift and here we're going to say tween max to MC. What movie clip? Well we want to say look inside of GTI MC or body MC. That's the movie clip that we're targeting and we're going to turn it blue. So let's test this puppy out. Let's get our Swift up there and there you go. It tweens from that original orange that we have on the stage and you'll see now that it just shifts nice and clear to that bright blue. So that's really all it takes to tween a color transformation one little line and we're familiar with this tween max constructor because um, we've used it a few times in previous tutorials uh, I can change this color around maybe we want to go to black I think this car would look awesome in black two three four five six there you go you go from awesome to best in just two seconds alright so alright that works that's pretty much all you need to know but let's just fancy this up a little bit. Let's say we want to randomize the color. All right. Well, I'm going to cheat. And down here, I have a function commented out, well, decommented, called get new color. And this color, this function here, is responsible for generating a random hexadecimal color value. So we're not going to really focus on how functions work here. We sort of assume you know a little bit of that. Um, just trust me that you don't need to know anything about what this means, okay, if you're a total beginner, disregard it, because really, all you need to do is know that whenever you tell the get new color function to run, that you're going to get a new color. All right, let's keep it at that. So instead of specifying the tint as a hard-coded value, I want to say, well, whenever this tween is constructed for the tint value, let's ask get new color what our color should be. So I don't even know what it's going to be the next time I test. All right, look at that. It's nice, a little canary yellow. And then we go. So here, every time I test the movie, I'm getting a tween to a random color. Now, I don't want to have to bang on command return to see this effect all the time. So let's just take this one little step further here. All right, I'm going to put all this into a function called... Um, change color, all right, and this is going to be triggered by a mouse event, so let's just type this out, mouse event, we're not going to return anything, and we're going to put all this inside of that function body, all right, again, I can't get into functions right now, but trust me, this will work, um, and I'm just going to tell the stage to add an event listener for a mouse event, dot mouse, who knows, we can do mouse down, doesn't matter, and I'm going to say change color. So every time I put press my mouse down, we're going to change the color. Again, if you need to know about how to do mouse interactivity, we'll talk about that some other time. Now, every time I click, we tween to another color. Look, it's like creamy, buttery goodness. Ooh. Maybe that's the one. Nah, that's no, eh. But here we go. Random color. And those tweens are running super, super smooth. All right, guys, thanks for uh, watching. Um, come back again, and we're going to talk about perpetual random animation in the very, very, very near future. So keep your ears open, leave some comments, um, ask questions. I'm here to help. Later, guys.